Stacey, it's so good to have you on the Jewelry Business Academy podcast. Thanks so much for joining me. Hi, I'm so honored to be on it. Yeah, I've really been looking forward to this convo with you. I know we we're chatting about it a few weeks ago, I think. Um, but I've really been looking forward to just talking about your business building journey because you've been in the industry for many, many years and you've built Stacy Scissors into an incredible brand. And this is an extra special episode because you have been a part of the Jewelry Business Academy for a couple of weeks now, still early days, but a couple of weeks. And so I know you and your business relatively well. And so, you know, I know that your story is really going to inspire a lot of jewelers who are maybe in the early stages or maybe at a similar stage as you and wanting to scale and not really sure what that looks like for them. So before we dive into everything else, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners and just give them a little bit of background as to how you got to where you are today? Yes, um, I actually am a college graduate. I went to school to be a teacher and I ended up staying home for a year when I had my first baby and I was bored. So I started this business and I actually fell in love. I always say it picked me. Um, and now that baby is 17. She's getting ready to go to college. I'm still doing this. And I can't imagine a better way to fill my days. I absolutely love what I do. Um, I loved teaching as well, but this is just different. It's my own thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I just like the creative outlet and I like that it's flexible. I get to make my schedule. I get to be mom first. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I really love it. Mm, I love that so much. Honestly, I, I know this is going to inspire so many people because I was actually chatting to a new mother yesterday who's just had her little one and she's wanting to do the same. And it's so interesting to see somebody who's like 17 years down the line who started in the same position and like kind of ended up going all in and on your jewelry business for all these years. So, you know, for somebody who's listening, who's where you were, 17 years ago, if you can think back that far um, in, wow. and is at that point of, okay, well, I have these babies at home and, you know, I kind of want to try make this jewelry business work. It's a really hard decision to make at that stage because you actually don't know if you're going to make it at that stage. So what would you so say to like somebody who's in that situation where you were 17 years ago? Wow. If I could go back and talk to myself in that moment, I would have changed so much of how I started because if you have like an end goal in mind and you know where it's going, you can streamline things to take you there faster and more efficient ways. And I just, I really started it as a hobby. I never really intended it for it to grow so big. I, I was, you know, having other plans. This was not going to be my job. So I really just really wish I would have started working with a coach sooner and, you know, decided this is going to be my career and how do I want, what are my future goals going to be? I think in the beginning, I was just kind of having fun. And if I sold something, it was extra money and it was fun. But thankfully, um, my husband was able to financially afford for me to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of people, when they start their business, they're, they're financially needing to depend on it. And I think the fact that I didn't had to, uh, do had to worry, you know, made it me more willing to just jump in and do it and not give up because I wasn't relying on it. I didn't have that pressure. Mm -hmm. So I think the pressure is a big deal when it's your only income you know, uh, I know a lot of other people who, when we're on our group calls and a lot of them are making the transition from their real nine to five to this job. And it's a lot, it's a lot to take on. Luckily, I, I feel like I had the freedom to explore it without the pressure. Mm. So yeah. I, you know, I think that that's a really easy way to go about it, but yeah. I don't. I don't think a lot of people have that luxury. No, definitely not. I think like it's definitely a blessing to be given that opportunity of like the time and the that pressure, that financial pressure being taken off. It definitely makes a difference. 
Um, so it's definitely a blessing. And I know there's a lot of mothers listening who do have that. And they still there's still so much fear even with that in even just putting your own work out there, even in just selling. Have you, like, I know you're a confident seller now, but have you ever had moments where you felt like uncomfortable? So many, so many, so many, so many more than I can count. I have, I, I mean, I started making hand-casted resin and that took me a long time, even just to make something sellable. Um, and so there was just a lot of trial and error in the beginning when you're selling something that you're like, I don't know, I think this one's pretty good, but it's still not perfect, you know, and just the anxiety of the person getting it. And oh my gosh, what if they say, you know, it's, it's ugly or it's, it's not perfect or it's, and I mean, I've luckily had really good customers who've been really kind, but then I also transitioned to getting a laser cutter and that was a whole new learning curve and catching it on fire and sending out pieces that were rough around the edges because I was still trying to figure out settings and uh, it, it's been a lot of trial and error. I have made so many mistakes. Uh, uh, my customers have usually been good about it. They've given me a lot of grace over the years. And I think through all that and starting with something so rough, now I'm more confident because I know, oh, these products are great mm -hmm. because I, I came from that. So if you're starting there and that's where you're at, just keep at it. You will refine. And then after you have really made all these mistakes, you finally know like, okay, you know, the 49 I made before this were okay, but these are great. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you knowing that it's great gives you the confidence. Yeah. So. Yeah, I love that. I honestly, I love your story because you really just went all in on taking messy action and that trial and error. And no matter what happened, I mean, I haven't even heard the story about your your machine catching on fire. That sounds very eventful. Um, that would put a lot of people off for life because that's scary and that's dangerous. And it it can also breed imposter syndrome big time when things like that happen. And you just kept moving forward. You kept, you, like you built that resilience that, hey, mistakes can happen, like things can happen and I'm gonna keep moving forward until I succeed in business. And I think that's a really powerful mindset to have. Um, and I think the fact that, you know, obviously now you're super confident in your products, your products are such good, great quality. And you've had 17 years essentially to perfect this. Um, but not only that, you have this conviction within your brand and your products and that comes across in the way you talk about it and that comes across in the way you present on Instagram and, and chat to your customers. You are so confident and you have so much conviction in what you're putting out there and people can feel that and it's hard for newer business owners to recognize that missing piece that they have and that comes with time. That conviction in what you're doing comes with time. So what would you say is like a piece of advice you would give to somebody who is um, maybe a couple of years in, but still isn't feeling confident in their pieces. They haven't got that conviction yet. And they're maybe like going back and forth as to like, should I keep going here? Oh my gosh. I heard the best. I, it wasn't a quote, but, um, uh, musician was on Instagram or maybe it was TikTok saying how when they create art you know all these musicians say I create it for the fans I create it for the audience we're here for the audience and this musician said actually I create it for me because if I create a piece of art for me that I love and this is everything I put myself into it and I love this that's the best we can do for our fans or for our audience mm. and I just thought that was so amazing like you know, if you're trying to make something that you think other people are going to like, it's forced and it's just, there's not, it's, it doesn't have the same authenticity. So I, I think if you make something that you love, that you want to wear, uh, a lot of times I get my ideas from my outfits. Oh, I have this outfit. I need these earrings to go with it. But if you make something for you that you love, that you want I guarantee you there's people out there who also want it, who also love it. So instead of trying to, you know, search trending words and seeing what your audience wants, I make stuff that I like 
you know, and I think if you do that, as corny as it sounds, if you make something with love that you love it, it, it carries the energy. And I think you can feel it. I always say like handmade jewelry has like a love you can feel if it's made with love and joy and happiness. I really think the energy is in the piece as cheesy as it sounds. Oh my gosh. I love this so much, Stacey. Like I couldn't agree with you more. Like there's definitely, well, number one, when it comes to handmade pieces, you can feel that energy. You can feel the love and care that's gone into pieces. And one of the things about jewelry that I love is it is an emotional piece, which means when people are purchasing, they also are associating the whole environment in which it was made with that piece. And like for me personally, when I buy something, I'll always think of like, okay, that person made it in this environment, this feeling yes. like this much love was poured into it. Like that means a lot to me. And for a lot of buyers, that's really, really important. And I think your thing of like not hopping on trends, I see a lot of people doing that. And that comes from a place of insecurity of what do I need to do for people to like me and then buy from me? Yes. Instead of doing that, that breeds a lot of insecurity, that breeds a lot of um, imposter syndrome, big time as well. And instead of doing that, going all in on finding out what it is that you like. And I think that's where there's a big disconnect often is because you know, and I see it with some of my clients who struggle to find their voice initially, because maybe for many years, they've been in the corporate world where they've had to mold themselves into a different version. And then even just finding their voice, finding their taste of what they like and what they want to design takes a little bit of breaking down some walls and it takes some Fine. time. But mm -hmm. like, I agree, like when you, when you go all in on what you love and you put that out there, the way that you present it, people who like the same thing, people who like the energy you're putting out there are going to be drawn in and they're going to feel that passion that you have for those pieces. And that's going to drive connection and that drives sales. Um, and it builds your community as well, because, you know, just in the way that you're showing up. So I love that so much, Stacey. And one quick question, because obviously you've you've got two daughters am I right that's right they're 15 and 17 and they're still a lot of work actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can I can believe that um so I have a question for our listeners who are maybe like mothers with younger children who are thinking like okay well how is building this business really going to impact my life as I raise my children like what are the, what would you say is the like top one to three things that you're so grateful that this business has enabled you to do with your children? Oh, only one to three. I have so many. I, it's really been the best thing ever. Um, I actually, I love to show my girls by example that you can do whatever you want. You know, there's, there's more than one way to get from point A to point B. Um, I, I want to create a legacy for them. And I think this has done so much for them in the fact that when they need money or, you know, oh, mom, I want to get this, I have them work for me. I have had them work events with me. I, I tell them, you know, this section, these items, these are yours. You're responsible for setting them up, making them and selling them. You know, I make them talk to my customers. I really think it's had a great impact on my daughters. Mm -hmm. um, just, just their sense of business. And I think they can take that and carry it anywhere. And I also think it's made a big impact that I've been home. When they're sick, I'm here. When they have a field trip, I'm there. You know, I think I think being present has been really good. And um, yeah, just leading by example, I think has been great. Mm, I love that so much. I think it's so like beautiful and such a, a blessing to have been able to spend like 17 years at home with your daughters and have them involved in your business in little ways. And, you know, I always say entrepreneurial entrepreneurship is such a personal growth journey and being able to invite your daughters into that and for them to be exposed to that and learn and grow in that way as well and also be involved in what you're doing is just so so special and so I really love that and I think a lot of mothers listening are going to feel really inspired by that as well so I want to kind of fast forward now because obviously as we've mentioned you've been in business for 17 years and you've been doing really well but you know yeah. I would say I want to talk a little bit about your experience in the academy, in the Jewelry Business Academy, because you've been in there for a couple of weeks now, still very early days. Yes. Um, but can you think back before we talk about your experience in the program, think back to a few weeks before you joined. How are you feeling 
before um, we you came into the program? Do you remember? Well, yes, absolutely. I I have kind of been baby stepping this business um, this whole time because my main role has been mom. So I've just kind of trial and error. Okay, this worked. I'll do this. You know, I'll watch a couple, you know, YouTube videos. How can I be better at this? Okay. And then I try that and, you know, I try this and now my kids are becoming to be more independent. So I have more time to throw into it. And I just, I, I'm all, I'm just always wanting to be better at my craft or whatever I'm doing. So I just felt like having an actual coach who knows, especially about jewelry specific, where I should really be putting my energy really helps me to focus on the important necessary things Mm -hmm. instead of me spinning my wheels, trying this theory and this theory. And then as soon as, you know, the results are kind of eh, I'm on to the next thing because I don't want to invest any more time. Mm -hmm. But if I have somebody saying, Hey, this is what you need to do. This works. This yields results then I'm more willing to go all in and give it my all. And if the results are kind of wishy-washy, I know, no, stick with it. So it's, it's a peace of mind. It's like, a, I don't know, it, it, you just are more willing to do the work if you know that you're doing the work in the right places, the right areas, the right ways. Mm-hmm. So it, it's almost like a peace of mind Yeah. where I, I feel like I'm being guided in the right way. I'm not just floundering around guessing Mm -hmm. takes the guesswork out of it. So I, I really regret not doing this sooner, but I think since it has been successful, that was kind of to my detriment because if, if it's going good, why fix it? Mm -hmm. So I think if I would have had more, like more of a struggle, I maybe would have been reaching out, but since it's been going pretty good, I just kind of went with the flow. But I I can really see now how much more potential I have doing certain things. And if I would have started this a long time ago, I can only imagine where I would be now, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Everything in its time. But um, that's my advice. Just get a coach early on. Yeah, you can save so much time, but you know, you've done an incredible job getting to where you are. And I think, you know, the one thing I remember is that you, you, you are doing well sales wise and in your business. Like you are, I would almost say you, you would have considered yourself to be thriving before we started working together. Would you say that's correct? For sure. You are thriving. You are not struggling. And it is hard to get support at that point because it's kind of like, well, well, how is this going to help me? Um, so, you know, Let's talk about like, you've been in it for a couple of weeks now. How are you feeling now? Where do you feel like it's helped you so far, even though we're only just getting started? I, it's just opened my eyes to where I want to go with it to the point where I honestly feel super, I want to say overwhelmed, but not in a stressful way, but just like on the brink of there's so many cool things I'm going to do. Like I have so many things that I'm looking forward to. Um, and this has been my busiest season. Obviously I've have not been able to do as many modules as I would like to, but come new year, I have so many plans to do so many things and just to break out in a different way, um, to start doing more of the wholesale and stuff like that. Um, just go big really with it yeah. bigger than I have been and I, even though it's successful I know it can be better yeah so I mean I love that and Stacy, I remember a conversation that we had and we can cut this out if you're not comfortable for us to share this but I remember us chatting at one point I think before you signed up you were quite anxious about like okay, but what if we implement these strategies and everything that I've built up to now, it comes tumbling down and my business kind of just like, like what if it like negatively impacts sales? And I think there was quite a lot of anxiety in introducing something new after being so consistent for 17 years. Can you talk around that a little bit and how you're feeling now? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. I, because what I had built worked. Yeah. Could it be better? Sure. But could it be worse? Yes. So, you know, it's just when you find something that works, it's scary to uh, switch it up. Uh, The fear that it won't work or that it'll make things worse uh, is very real. However, I, 
I slept on it and I just kind of had to take a risk, I guess. Mm -hmm. I took a chance and I guess I, I chalked it up to, well, if it doesn't work, I'll go back. I'll go back to my old way. If I did it once I could do it again. So I kind of used that as like a back back burner plan. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the only thing I stand to lose then is the money I'm paying Robin, which is a concern, but uh, you had a guarantee for, you know, success. So I was like, well, then that takes that, you know, risk down. So then at that point it was like, why not? Mm -hmm. Why not? If, if it could be better, why not? I can always go back to my old way. But now I'm like, it's not even like a new way. It's just doing what I'm doing in a more streamlined, uh, beneficial way. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not even like I'm doing something completely different. It's just yeah. streamlining how I'm doing it yeah. to yield better results. Yeah. So, and I love that you shared that, Stacey, because um, I remember uh, this conversation and I was like, we're not going to do anything drastic to put and jeopardize any revenue streams. We do it gradually. We do it as a refinement process. And um, I know one of the things we did was we've cut your work hours or added in more breaks into your day. And we've also just given you kind of quite a more of a set schedule and just those things I remember you reaching out and and letting me know kind of how those had impacted you just pretty quickly into your journey do you want to share if you remember how how that's been yes this has been I have integrated this into every area of my life so what I used to do is come to my office okay I have three things to do social media pack these orders you know and design this design well, if you have eight, uh, nine hours to do that and you have your three goals, you'll spend eight or nine hours to do those three goals. But now with like, okay, I have a 90 minute block for this social media. Okay. Since I know I have like a 90 minute block, I'll get it done in the 90 minutes. Mm. Something about the timer ticking and I know, okay, I got to move on. It just, you, you'll get it done. You'll get it done. And then I take a break and then I come back and it's 90 minutes to pack these orders. Oh my gosh. And I'll get it done. And then, you know, I'll spend the next block creating this design and I'll get it done. So now I've worked literally half of my usual work day and I've gotten the tasks done mm -hmm. and I've gotten to the point where I will do this to clean my house. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to set 90 minutes and I'm going to see how much I can clean. And it's stupid how much I can clean in 90 minutes. If, if a timer is telling me I only have 90 minutes. I know. So, um, I've been using that additional time to work on bettering my business and my future goals. Whereas before I would say I have no time to do that. Mm. So doing the work blocks and I've had to, it, it, this has been hard because let's say it's 90 minutes for social media and I don't get the three stories, the one post and the one reel done, or I have an appointment. So I missed that window or whatever. It's been a new challenge for me to realize that's okay skip that window, move on. You're going to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You have another block for that tomorrow. It's okay. Keep moving mm -hmm. because the old me would come home and start at the beginning of my day and try to get all these things done. And it's almost takes more time to come home, get your bearings, figure out what you're going to do and get started. Whereas now I'm like, okay, what block am I in? Let's do that. It mm -hmm. takes the guesswork out of it. I hit the ground running and whatever block was missed. Oh, well, come back at it tomorrow. So it, it actually has been really, um, liberating in that way, like stress relieving. I'm not like, Oh no, I went and I did this and that. No, I don't have time for all these things. It's like, no, skip that window. What's next do it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's been good too, just to help me figure out like what I should be doing. Should I be coming home after an appointment and trying to cram my whole work day in? Maybe not. Yeah. It comes so down to like freeing up that headspace, freeing yeah. up that headspace and knowing that also integrating your business with your life. Like you don't want your business running your life. You want it to integrate with your life. So the whole reason you have a business is so you can go run errands in the morning and come back and not have a massive to-do list to check through in the afternoon. Like, I think it's like embracing the integration of that. So I love that, Stacey. Um, do you have a few minutes to go over? Or are you on a tight schedule? Yeah. 
You're no, a, good. perfect. I just want to make sure because we've been chatting for a while. I didn't realize we had time, but I would love to know what are some of the wins you've experienced since joining the Academy? I remember, I think it was around Black Friday. I think you did an Instagram live sale and you shared some like some wins from that. So I don't know if you're comfortable sharing some of the wins that you've experienced Absolutely. so far. Um, yeah, I, so I do these Instagram live sales where I go live and I, I show all my new merchandise and I sell it live. And then after that, I'll put it on my website. So that gives my shoppers like a first time to buy. Uh, and I always will buy a promoted post before every live just to, you know, boost the awareness, get people on, uh, let's get more people this time than last time. I always have these goals. And so I'm, I'm buying these promoted posts. Well, the last one per your advice, I did not buy a promoted post and I did the marketing that you suggested prior to, mm -hmm. and it was by far the best, the most people on it, you know, on the live best sales, everything. And I think that really like solidified the belief for me that this is working. This is, you know, because the day before I was really like, I know Robin said not to do a promoted post, but should I just do it anyway? I mean, what is it going to hurt? I, I did the marketing, but I could also just buy the post. And I was having this like internal dilemma. And then I finally was like, no, we're going to trust the coach. This is why <laughs> we got the coach. We're going to do what the coach said. Okay. I'm going to do it. We're going to put our faith in this new method. We're going to do it. No promoted post. I didn't promote it. Ended up being the best ever. And I was like, oh my God, why am I questioning her? Like, this is why I hired you. Why am I over here? Like, maybe I should not do what she says. That's so ridiculous. So I think that moment and then it being such a success was really like, okay, just don't question it. Just do it. This is the reason why you, you go to a coach because mm. you're trying to figure it out on your own before. Now you have somebody to tell you, and then you want to question what they tell you. That's dumb. Just you're, that's the reason you're here. Trust your advice. I did it. It worked. So I think it was good for me to have that little um, freak out and then success because yeah. it helped me realize to trust the process. Yeah. It's hard to break old habits, man. It is really hard. It's scary. It's you're going out into new uncharted territory. It's easy to fall back to what you know works, mm. but I mean, this worked better. So, um, it's, it's really creating new habits and new ways of thinking just it, all around. Mm. So I'm so glad you share that Stacy, because, you know, it is so true. Like it's, it's actually very hard some, for some people, especially when you're more established and you have these routines and habits and ways of doing things to relax into a new process. It takes like it takes testing it out a few times and be like, OK, let, let me dip my foot in and see. Yes. And then I can kind of relax more into it. And now, like moving forward, I think you, you'll find it even easier because you're like, OK, I think I think she knows what she's doing here. Um, so I love that. And what what would you say is one of the biggest lessons that you've learned since joining the Academy? Wow, that's hard. Biggest lessons. Oh man, uh, basically the most like wow moment is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Just show up real mm -hmm. because I really thought you were going to sit when I first hired you, I thought I was like, oh my gosh, she is going to troll my Instagram and she is going to be like this messy hair. Don't care post delete it. <laughs> <laughs> but instead you were like, come on, messy hair, just be authentic. You know, it comes through. So I think that was like a really big aha for me. Like, oh my gosh, I don't have to try to do these like really overproduced, amazing, stunning Instagram posts. I just need to come on. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I started thinking about a lot of the jewelry people that I follow and watch and they're not like over crazy produced either. They're coming on, they're talking about their dogs and their day and they're having ice cream or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So um, it was cool to realize that you know, you don't need to present as this highly polished, beautiful, perfect gem all the time. I think mm -hmm. that was like a really big, like, wow moment for me. 
Yeah, you know what? It's so interesting how how so many people feel that they have to present in a certain way for people to know, like, trust and buy from them. And it's so different on social media, especially in the market that we're in right now. People just want to connect with a real person who shows up as they are. You don't have to be anyone else for them to want to buy from you. And that's such a it's such a relief to be able to be like, yeah. I will be accepted and loved and like people will buy from me no matter how I'm showing up, I can show up with no makeup. I mean, I have a lot of clients that show up with no makeup, messy hair, whatever. And it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're showing up in a way that's authentic to you. And then obviously putting out the right types of content that we know are hitting the different buyers and all of that. Um, but yeah, I think that's a beautiful lesson, Stacey. So I would love to know, you know, what has been your favorite, one of your favorite parts of being a part of the Jewelry Business Academy and what are you enjoying the most? Um, for me, it goes back to knowing what to do with no question. Mm -hmm. That's, that's been the most beneficial, um, part to it. Just like knowing, okay, this is what I should be doing. And the peace of mind knowing this is what I should be doing. There's no questions behind it. It's the clear mind. Like, okay, this is what I need to do. These are the three things I need to do. Just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think I wasted so much time with trying to guess, where my time is best spent. Okay. Should I be doing this? Should I be, you know, mm -hmm. just knowing, just being like, okay, these, this is what I need to do this, 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 and do it. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Honestly, when you know what to do, it's simple to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I think we put, sometimes we, we spend so much time thinking of all the things we need to do and we build it up into this very complex thing. And I always say like a jewelry business is just an accumulation of teeny tiny doable steps. And it's knowing what are the right steps for your business and what works for your lifestyle and how much time and energy you have. And it's getting the right kind of formula for your business. Um, so I'm so happy to hear that, Stacey. And I'd love to know what would your advice be to somebody who's listening to this, who maybe is thriving in their business and they are doing well and they've, but they maybe have hit a plateau, but they're like, well, I'm doing well. Like there's no need to change things. What would your advice be to somebody who's thinking about getting support in the academy, but they're, you know, not too sure about investing in themselves and their business? I would say, uh, it pays for itself. Mm -hmm. because the amount of extra sales and extra customers you acquire doing the correct steps, it pays for the coaching. The extra sales pay for the coaching. So then if that's the case, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, it could always be better. It could mm -hmm. always be better, you know? And even if let's just say the sales were the same, just having my day in these work windows, I mean, just for the pure structure and ease of mind, even if the it, sales weren't better, it would still be better. It's a better work day. It's a better workflow. Um, I, I just love it. I, I really can't believe I didn't do this sooner. But also it's hard to choose somebody because you don't know who's authentic and who's going to really help you. Mm. So it's that that's a huge part of it. That was a huge part of why I was like, I don't know. Should I trust this person? Does she really know? So mm -hmm. I think that if you can do some research and I mean, I can't tell you how much I Googled and watched <laughs> people on YouTube talk about you and your coaching strategies, I couldn't find one naysayer. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, if people are upset, they hit YouTube, you know, they mm -hmm. talk about when they're upset. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find anybody upset. So I was like, well, that's a good sign, you know? So I think if you can find somebody that you can trust and actually follow their advice, that's everything. That's big. Yeah. That was a big hurdle for me. Yeah. I mean, I totally get it. It It is big. Like that trust thing is massive. So I'm so glad that you kind of, you did, you, there was a lot of fear there. I remember there was a lot of fear, but Definitely. you kind of felt the fear. You did your research, you came in and you kind of embraced the strategies, embraced the structure. And I'm, I'm so glad that you did, Stacey. It's been so much fun working oh, with you. So and glad. we're only just getting started, which like there's so much potential here and you know what we have in the works as well for you. So I'm excited for you and your business. Is there anything else you want to share with our listeners before we wrap up? Anything else um, that we didn't cover? Just that if you're not working with a coach, find somebody that speaks to you and work with a coach. 
-hmm. it's so beneficial in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I'm not being biased, but I've, I've, I've obviously shared on my, my journey on this podcast a couple of times, and it's very different having that support and the, the community aspect as well. And just the structure, it, it frees up so much headspace. So I'm so glad that you're having a good experience and I'm looking forward to bringing you back in a couple of months so we can share like the growth and the evolution and the lessons learned um, a few months down the line as well. So this has been so much fun, Stacey. Thank you for sharing your story Great, and your lessons you learned so you. openly. And I know we're going to have listeners who are going to feel so inspired by you and your story. And also, I think we have a lot of listeners who would love to potentially order some laser engraved pieces from you or logo pendants or yes. anything like that. So for anyone who's feeling inspired and wants to connect with you on your journey, where can they find you and how can they support you? Oh man. Um, I am Stacy scissors on Instagram and my website is shop rws.com. It's for running with scissors. That's the name of my business. Mm -hmm. And do you want to talk about those little pendants? Cause I think you could get some people really interested in those. Yes. Um, I make super crazy, fun, colorful, bright, big, bold statement jewelry for living your best life. Um, this is the making cookies bib necklace. It's got like a little uh, so kit cute. for making gingerbread cookies and of course matching earrings because love everybody them. matching I love them so, they're um, so cute it's fun it's yeah. super fun jewelry and I do a lot of stuff for every holiday and I love it it's expressive and always made with love Mm, I love that so much, Stacey. Well, thank you again for being here and for sharing your story. And I can't wait to bring you back on in a couple of months. I'll be ready.